Hi everyone, this is a new video for the Julia Tutorials 2021 series. Um, this is video number three, where we're going to go over functions, um, what they're used for, um, how we can make our code look better and uh, why we use them and um, different ways to, to use them in Julia. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so we're going to go straight into the notebook that I prepared for you. If you want all the notebooks, they're available on uh, GitHub, on my GitHub. I'm going to put the link down below in the description. Um, okay, so let's dive right in. Okay, so I made some explanations for you. Um, you can see the this is the syntax for the, for the for functions that we're going to use. So you put comments in the first place, and then you have the keyword function the name of your function, and then between parentheses here, you have first argument, second argument, and then you have, or you can have as many arguments as you want, actually. And then you have the body of the function where you, you put whatever the function does, and then you've got the end keyword as, as with many commands in, in Julia. Um, so basically the, the goal of functions is not to repeat yourself. This is using the dry principle, which is, well, D-R-Y, which is don't repeat yourself. Uh, where basically you don't want to use the same code several times. So you call it the, using a, a function and well, you, you name it using a function and then you call it within your code. Um, this way it makes your code less redundant and shorter as well, which is, uh, which is definitely better. Okay, so let's go over a couple examples here. Um, let me just restart the kernel. Okay, there we go. The kernel is restarted. So you see here, I'm following the, the syntax from above that I wrote. You can also have single line comments as I wrote here. Um, this is a single line comment and it's basically meant to describe whatever this function f is doing. So here you see f is the name of the function and between parentheses we have the arguments. In this case we have none, like there's no argument. So it's just going to be the function f and whatever what this function does is it prints a a a. Uh, yeah, you can do it. You can you can make it do it uh, more meaningful things, but this is the first one. Okay, let's run that. This way, we create the function. We mm, we create uh, the name of the function, and we see that Julia understood that, so it, it outputs an F here. Um, now, if we just yeah, if we just run the function, uh, run run this cell, then we have F, but F is not called. If we mean to call F, we need to put parentheses like this around mm, after the function. Um, here it tells us that there exists a function f which has one method. Um, don't worry too much about that. It has to do with uh, it's useful when you uh, consider multiple dispatch. But for right now, it's uh, we, we won't worry about that. So this is the way to call it. Uh, you put parentheses right after it, and uh, and it outputs AAA. So basically, when you call it, what it does is it goes into the definition of the function, and it goes line by line. In this case, there's only one line, but how do we put another line with like BBB and then we run that and here we call it again. You see that we've got AA BBB. Well, the way the reason it's one next to another is because I put print and not print LN and LN makes automatically makes a new line at the end of, of the of whatever is printed. So if we do this and now we call it, you see we've got AAA BBB. So basically we get into the function, we do all the lines in the body of the function. So the body of the function is the indented part. Um, I think in Julia it doesn't have to be indented as opposed to Python where it, it has to be indented. Um, but ju because Julia uses the end keyword and then uh, they figure out that you don't have to indent it. Um, but yeah, so it goes through all the lines and then at the end it, it finishes the task. Um, okay, now we can have other functions with arguments. Here, um, X and Y are they don't have to be declared before because they're just dummy variables. Just like if you say f of x equals x squared in, in math, the x doesn't mean anything really. It's just the name of the variable. This is the same thing. So we put a, try to put meaningful, meaningful descriptions, um, not to talk too much. Uh, and, um, and here in this case, it returns the sum of x and y, which should, be, which should both be of a numerical type. So let's see what, what it does first, and then we'll, we'll see what goes wrong. So here we've got the function, everything's working because, well, at least Julia understood. Um, and uh, if we add two and three, then we get five as expected, right? 
Um, now, if instead of three, we had had like ABC, then we get an error because no method matching. This is basically meaning that you can't add an integer and a string because the first argument here is an integer and this is a string. So if we go back to three, uh, this, this works. Um, now, another way to, to write functions is using this notation here. So we use this um, arrow thing where basically just ignore the first part for now. Um, just focus on this. This means you, we're going to take an x and we're going to change it to some x squared. This is what the function does. And then we call this function h. So h is the name of the function. We save that. We've got one generic function. And then if we go h of 2, then we're going to get 2 squared, which is going to be 4. And there we go. Okay, now th that was two lines and it's useful if we want to save this function for later. If we want to just have the function once and we don't need it anymore, we can use the, the map method, which means take this function, which is the function which goes from x to x cubed. So you take an x and you cube it and then apply it to two. So we're going to take two and then cube it. That's what this map does. It replaces the, the argument here by the two here. And if we do this, we get eight because we, we took the two here, we cubed it, two times two times two is eight, therefore this is a result. Now similarly to what we saw before, we get these um, these signs as well that we can, we can use as functions. These are also function names. So we could have written something like um, two plus three plus four, um, and that would give us nine. But we can also use the plus as a function, which is going to sum two and three and four. That's what it's going to do, and we get the same output. Um, using the same idea, we get um, minus two and three, and this is going to do two and then minus three. So it's basically taking the first argument and taking minus the second one. Um, and this gives us two minus three, which is one, uh, minus one. And then if we put another argument, uh, it doesn't work because doesn't it's not implemented how to um, work with that so we just use these uh, with two arguments and, and it can be useful sometimes same thing for this uh, 2 times 3 times 4 is, is 24 6 divided by 2 is 3.0 um, 2 to the power of 3 is 8 and 24 modulus 7 is 3 so we have all those other functions that we can use here okay that was a short one um, there are the interesting things with uh, with functions um, like multiple dispatch. That could be pretty nice to study in another video, um, where basically depending on whatever the type is of your arguments, you do different things with the functions. But we're gonna keep it short today, and uh, we'll keep that for another video. I'm sorry I didn't upload much for a month, two months. Um, I was having exams. I was finishing my uh, bachelor's thesis, which now is submitted and uh, waiting to be graded. So yeah, I'm going to try to upload a bit more frequently in the future, and um, we'll see how how things go and how much time I have. So thank you for watching, and um, if you like it, you can subscribe and uh, and like the video. That would be cool. Comment and share it with your friends. And with that, I will see you next time. Bye.